Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Robinson. I teach algebra in room N3. If you want to come say hi to me if I'm not your teacher. And welcome back. This is day five of solving more multi-step equations. So we again want to isolate that variable. So let's start with this number one. So we're going to solve some equations, add to our add to our group of equation notes. So first we want to get rid of this constant. So the opposite of negative eight would be positive eight. I then want to move it to both sides. And I get 32 plus 8 equals 40. Then I want to move this 3. So the inverse of dividing by 3 would be multiplying 3. Again, I want to do the same exact thing on both sides. So I have a balanced equation. And 40 times 3 is 120. Now from here, a lot of people are going to want to distribute. They, they think, okay, the first, next thing I do is distribute, and then I would have a two-step equation. Well, there's a different way we can approach this. Because the 2 is multiplied to everything on the inside, the inverse of that would be to actually I could move the 2 right now. Okay, so if you don't do it that way, that's totally fine. Just see if you get the same answer as me, as me at the end. And then I have x plus 4 to left. Now, what's the inverse of adding 4 or a positive 4 would be a negative 4. So then I would have x equals 56. So if you distributed, you should have also gotten x equals 56. Now it's your turn. We are going to, you're going to try A on your own. Now A is a little bit different. There are two X's, so think about your last notes about variables on both sides. And my rule of thumb is if we have any parentheses, if we have any problems in the denominator, if we have any numbers, we want to move them. So then we can solve from there. So my recommendation is to move the 7 to start with. So opposite of or the inverse of dividing 7 would be multiplying. So then we'd have this. So I will help you at that point. Pause the video. Solve the problem. Show your work. And then check back. All right. My answer is x equals 18. So check to make sure you got the same as me. You can circle it. You can box it in. It's really helpful in your notes to show that work. All right. Now we're moving on to equations. Again, I'm going to solve one, and then you're going to try the next one. All right, so because we have this plus 9 on here, we want to first deal with the parentheses. We can't really do any shortcuts on this one. So 1 fourth x minus 1 fourth plus 9 equals 2x. Okay, and I'm actually going to change these to decimals. Feel free to do that if it's a pretty easy conversion from fraction to decimal. So 0.25x minus 0.25 plus 9 equals 2x. And now if you guys notice, there are two, two terms that are alike, so we can combine them. That's always a good thing to do is to combine like terms. Again, every step you make, it should get easier. So if Something is getting more complicated. Maybe go back and see what happened. So again, it look, should look easier as you progress. Okay, now I want to put these x's together. All right, so I got to move one of them. So I'm going to move this 0.25x over to the other side by subtracting it. Now again, we want to combine like terms. 0.25x minus active board's being kind of funky. Sorry about that, guys. So I'm going to subtract 0.25x to both sides, and what I have left over is 8.75, which equals 2 minus 0.25 would be 1.75x. All right, and now our last step is getting, again, getting this x isolated, so dividing 1.75 to both sides, and I would get x equals 5. All right, so it's pretty, pretty complicated problem, but you got to get used to fractions this year. All right, so the one that I'd like you guys to try on your own is this B problem right here. So I have 2 thirds times 3x plus 4 equals 4. Okay, so first I'm going to actually help start, start off with distributing. So if we notice, 
I have 2 thirds times 3x. Now we have, are going to think about that imaginary 1 under the denominator and multiply across. And let's see if we can reduce this. Okay, so I have 2 times 3x, which is 6x, over 3 times 1, which is 3. Well, 6 divided by 3 is 2x. Well, goodbye fraction for that one. Awesome. Okay, and then we're going to do it again. So 2 thirds times 4 over 1, multiply across, and I get 8 over 3. Okay, so that one we can't reduce more, but at least... We can put them together now. So I have 2x plus 8 thirds equals 4. Okay, so how about you try, try it and solve it from there. I would recommend to maybe make a common denominator for the 4. So then you can combine that with the 8 thirds. All right, the answer to that one is 2 thirds. Because the denominator is 3, I would not recommend to move this one to a decimal. I would keep it as a fraction. And then again, like I said, you could change this 4 into also being a fraction. So then that would become 12 over 3. So then that would be easy to move them. So x equals 2 thirds. All right, so now we're going to move on to application, our favorite thing, some word problems. So these are definitely important, especially when it comes to finals. And when we have our assessments, our tests and quizzes, you are going to have some word problems. We got to read through these. So I always like to underline, so read along as I go through this. Ms. Costello cross, cross country team has four seniors, three juniors, seven sophomores, and six freshmen. Nine of the members are males and the rest are females. Use this information to answer the following questions. So in order to do any information, we first need to figure out the total. So what is the total? of students that we have. So four plus three plus seven plus six is 20. So we got 20 total, okay? And if nine are males, therefore 20 minus nine would be 11 females. So we wanna break it down as much as possible. So what percentage of the team is freshmen? So how we can make a percent. So there are six freshmen out of 20, and we're going to put that we're going to actually divide that so we can figure out the percent. So 6 divided by 20 is 0.3. And then how do I make that into a percent? I move it over twice and I get 30%. You can also times it by 100 if you'd like to. Okay, so now I want you to try. So what percent of the team are female? So we already figured out that there's 11 out of 20 that are female. So I want you to practice and how would you convert that or translate it to a percent? So you should have gotten 55%, which seems reasonable. If nine are male and 11 are female, well, there should be more females, so that should be more than 50%. So you always should check back. Is your answer reasonable to the question? Now let's go to the other way. Let's We're going to convert the other way now. If only 75% of the team members are allowed to compete, how many runners will not compete? Well, if we've got 100% and 75 are allowed... Well, how many are left then? Well, we've got 25%. Now, if we have a percent and we want to make it into a decimal, we're going to move the other way. So that's 0.25%. And how many runners are there total? Well, there's 20 runners. So you can do 20 times 0.25 to figure out how many people are not running. So do that now, please. So you should have gotten five runners. We always like to label when it's a word problem. All right, the last question. If 5% of the students in the school are on Mrs. Costello's team, how many students are in the school? All right, so we want to figure out how many. So this I would talk about the percentage. So we could do actually a percent proportion. There's a few different ways that we could rock this out. So 5% of the students in the school are in Mrs. Costello's team, so 5%, okay? And how many people? That's 20. All right. If we want the 100%, 100% is the school part. So this is the team. And this is the school. How many students are at the school? 
All right, so we can figure this out by cross multiplying, which we can practice. So 5x equals 20 times 100, which is 2,000, and then divide. So then there are 400 students at that school. So it's all about how are they asking the question and what do they want and how can you use that for percentages or how do you make, how do you use your information to answer the question. So thank you so much for joining us on this lesson and I hope to see you in the halls. Have a great day.